Hi everybody, this is Pam with Jesus Junk Journals and I've, I've got the second slow stitch video up to do a slow stitch sampler. This is kind of the, I guess you'd say an intermediate level maybe because I'm gonna talk about doing the yo-yos and um, <clears throat> some more complicated stitching and things. And so come on and um, watch me, stitch with me or whatever. We're gonna have some fun. Okay, so we're going to do uh, some more slow stitching, a, a little more, I guess you could say advanced slow stitching. Um, and one of the things that we're going to use is we're going to make a yo-yo. So let me explain that. So you cut a circle of fabric. This is a yo-yo. You've seen quilts made out of them and things. Uh, you make a circle. Now you could use any size circle you want. This size circle made this yo-yo. So if you want a bigger one, a lot of people use like a CD as a pattern and that would make a little bit larger one. I just used the, <laughs> I just drew around one of my paint bowls around the bottom of it on cardboard and cut it out and it doesn't have to be perfect. So then I drew it on fabric. So I'll make another one. So you put it on here and draw a circle. Got my my paper scissors so they're not the greatest for cutting fabric and the other thing is <clears throat> it's easier to make these yo-yos if you use a really long needle and they have these long needles I got some at Walmart and they're called quilters basting needles and they're very long and thin and um, and then you want to use thread that's really strong it needs to be strong enough that if it's doubled it won't break or if you use quilting thread, it's super strong. You could use one thickness of that thread. So either a double of regular thread or a single of, quil of uh, quilting thread. Here's my needle. See how long it is and thin it is. Tie a knot, got to with my finger, wind it around my thumb or finger and get a knot. So what you're gonna do is just go around the edge of this with a, a basting stitch, which just means a very, doesn't have to be a short stitch, but a long, loose stitch. Turn the edge up like a quarter of an inch, roughly. Doesn't have to be perfect. And long stitches, and you just start to work your way around. Now, I know I'm left-handed, so you guys, I'm... It's funny because I watched a video of how to do this, and it was a right-handed person. So then when I started doing it, it was like, this doesn't seem right. <laughs> <laughs> so it won't look like this when you do it if you're right-handed it'll be the other direction you'll be going this way so um <laughs> I keep forgetting the only thing I do right-handed is I use scissors right-handed there you go so you just gather as much as you want to gather and then pull the needle through and then go on around the rest of the way So I have a, I'll tell you a funny story while I'm doing this. We went to Little Rock yesterday, or a couple of days ago. Anyway, on our way back, we started, stopped in this little diner. And uh, my husband is, he likes breakfast. He likes to get breakfast out, but he's a super picky eater with breakfast. He wants his eggs just right. He wants his bacon burnt. He wants everything hot, blah, blah, blah. So this place said they had breakfast all day. So you think, okay, these people know how to make breakfast then. There was just one one girl waiting tables and there was one girl in the kitchen and we could see through the window into the kitchen and hear him talking and anyway so he orders his breakfast he decides to order scrambled eggs just to <laughs> hopefully make it simpler and less likely to have a mistake so we wait we wait i just got like a pulled pork sandwich so orders this bacon burn anyway it finally comes out and oh my gosh the eggs look like leather they look like they were so burnt I, I was like it took my breath away <laughs> at how bad they were and oh I knew he was just not going to be able to eat them so he took one bite and he spit it out I'm like oh my gosh so when the waitress came back he said no 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 this isn't right and she said well I'm sorry we have a new cook and she you know she apologized 
the bacon wasn't burnt. It was just not right. So he goes, just never mind. I mean, he, he didn't get mean about it. He just said, never mind. I'm just going to like, forget it. Don't take this off the ticket and we'll just pretend like I didn't order anything. And he, he, he went out to the car and uh, I went ahead and finished my food and I heard her go back. So let me, let me go back to this now. So what you do then is you pull this, you start to pull this uh, thread and gather it. And you're going to gather it around all the way around. It makes this little puff. So pull it. I'm kind of pulling those out as I go. So they're all gathered up in the center and then just start to push them down so that they turn inward and center it. So pull the puffy part in the back around until that gathered part is in the center of it. And you've got your, you've got your little yo-yo. I'm just going to put the needle down inside there. Fiddling around, pull these so they're even. But that is basically your little yo-yo. I'm showing you this because something that I'm seeing in the slow stitching a lot is people take the yo-yos and applique them to their little piece of sewing. So I'm going to start two new ones. So what I did is I cut, I had this, uh, I don't like it. It's uh, <laughs> It is felt that has glitter in it. And I, I don't care for it. So what I did is I cut a piece of it and I'm, I'm going to make a sampler of stitching to put in to a journal just as something to poke into a pocket. And so that's about the size I wanted. You can make it any size you want. I did this one, cut this out about this size. Then I took a piece of muslin and I ripped it. So it's got the raw edges. I actually need to pull the threads on this side. I cut this side. So anyway, back to the story. So the waitress is horrified. And I could hear the girl in the back when she took the dish back there. The girl goes, it was terrible, wasn't it? <laughs> and the girl said, oh, yes, she was consoling. She's like, oh, it's okay. She, I heard her say, we can practice later. <laughs> and I thought, oh, my goodness. And uh, so she came back out. And I felt bad for the girl in the kitchen, you know. And uh, I said, I'm sorry, I said, but those eggs were really, really bad, and she needs to learn how to cook eggs, and uh, she goes, I know, she's she's new, and, you know, I said, I would really like to go back there. I wish I could go back there and just show her how to cook, how to cook an egg, and she looked at me, and she goes, well, you could if you want to. You, she'd probably be glad for you to go back and help her, and, and uh, I looked at her because I thought, for real? Because there's like two other tables with people sitting out there, and we've got this whole, you know, COVID thing, people with masks and everything. And I looked at her, I go, really? And she goes, yeah. So I got up and I went back to the kitchen <laughs> and she came with me and she told the girl, "This she's going to show you how to cook an egg. And the girl's like, okay, that'd be great. And, and she was sweet. You know, a lot of people would have said, forget that. I don't, you know, I don't need any nosy person knows into my business. But uh, so I just, I was aware that my husband was sitting in the car waiting on me. And I also was aware that somebody could call the health department <laughs> or, you know, whatever. And so I was in a hurry. So I just, they showed me the eggs. I grabbed one and I broke it. And, you know, I said, now, if you have time, you could break it and put it in a bowl, stir it up and pour it on the grill. But we're going to just do this really quick. Like if you want to scramble an egg, and you're in a hurry. I said, so I broke the egg and it was a hot grill. It was like, I think too hot for cooking eggs on. Anyway, that's a whole other day of lessons. <laughs> and uh, so I, I put that egg on the grill and I took the spatula and I just started, you know, scrambling it really fast. I said, you gotta be really quick, cook it really fast. It's done. You know, people don't like runny eggs. So check it, make sure you've got it all cooked, but then you get it off of there and, and you know, it's done. So um, that was it. And so she thanked me. And then she looked at me, the girl that cooked, and she goes, well, I haven't cooked for five years. I just recently started cooking again. <laughs> like, 
Okay. Oh. All right. So anyway, that was my adventure and hilarious. I thought I just couldn't believe it that I couldn't believe I did. I couldn't believe they let me do it. <laughs> so anyway, and so the thing is, I grew up in the back of a restaurant. My mom and dad always had businesses like that. And my mom had a restaurant called Mac and Betty's Cafe. And I grew up, you know, in the back of that place. So I was very familiar with the grill all my life. And then later on, they bought a Dairy Queen and I managed it for a little while before I went to Hallmark. And, you know, I knew my way around a grill, uh, cooking and so on and so forth. So <laughs> there was a reason why I felt like I could be qualified to do that. Cut a piece of muslin for both of these, just a little bit bigger than the felt. And I think I'm going to go ahead and cut this because I want a fringe edge around the whole thing. So I'm going to cut and fringe it out. But that poor girl, she's, she's basically a short order cook and can't cook. So she had no clue about the bacon either. And, you know, it's kind of a tricky thing. I've never done, I've never done the short order cooking. My mom was doing it when I was a kid, but, you know, you have to, get everything done at the same time. So you, you've got to have your toast and your bacon and your eggs all, and, and potatoes if you have those, all come out and be ready at the same time. You can't have cold eggs and so on and so forth. So I just, oh, I'm like, oh God, help that girl learn how to cook in Jesus name. Cause <laughs> on this, and I'm gonna let, again, rem remember with the slow stitching, it's all about uh, letting everything show, letting your knots show, letting there be rips and tears and imperfections and the seams don't have to be straight the stitches don't have to be even it's just stitching and I do like this long needle for this boy this is a lot easier let me tell you than the short needle I was using on the other video and then I'll probably use a different color on the other two sides Let's see, I am going to probably put I don't it's so small. I don't want to put a great big giant piece of fabric and cover up the white all the way. I want it to so I'm just gonna tear a little piece or cut a little piece of this fabric. And then a yo-yo beyond there. And some lace and things. So I think I will use, actually, hmm. I'm gonna use this because it will really stand out. And there's that dark red in both of those. I could just do a straight stitch, but since I have color, I want to, I'm want i gonna do some, I do one that's a little bit more decorative. So I'm gonna do a chain stitch. So I'm gonna come from the back. And make a loop the needle next to that where it came out at make a little stitch right there come over the top of this like that and just that's basically you just keep doing that so I'm gonna make another one right next to that one go up a little bit come out Okay, so up here where I'm gonna end it, I'm just gonna take a stitch here and tie a knot in the back. Wait to do this side because I'm gonna use a different color. And since I have this already in my needle, I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, appliqueing. Let's see, I want a really small piece of this. And so I'm just gonna do it over here. I'm just going to do a running stitch on this side. And I don't want that that close to that, so I'm just going to cut it off. And fray it out a little bit. Okay, now I want to do, let's see. 
I think I'll do some X's. So I'm going to come start here, go here, and then come backwards right next to that. Sort of the common way of doing these for this slow stitching is to make them wonky. So you don't have to, you can make them perfect if you want, but uh, feel free to intentionally make them crooked or different sizes or whatever. I don't have to be intentional. <laughs> it's just gonna happen that way. <laughs> Some people uh, use batting. You can get that batting that comes in sheets. If you have that already, that's something you can use to sew your um, slow stitching on or just even a piece of muslin. You don't have, to, like I put felt in this, you don't have to do that. You can just use a piece of muslin if you want to. I kind of like the thickness, the puffiness of it. Okay, so this is done. I'm gonna knot it in the back. I think I'm gonna use a soft pink. Let me see what I have here. I think I'll use this. Um, I talked about this in my other video. I went to a flea market and got this lovely box of somebody's embroidery floss for like six dollars and so that's what I'm working out of she had a nice assortment of colors that were pretty muted and works really well for what I what I want to do now you can do it either way I'm going to do this because I want to show that circle there and so let's see if I do I think it will show more. I'm gonna do that. So we've got kind of, they're spread out, but they're still overlapping. And so what I'm gonna do is just uh, kind of tack it down on the edges. I'm just barely catching it and then tacking it to the fabric behind it so it doesn't show. Then I'm poking it in and kind of running it through the edge a little bit further away. Then going back and catching the, I'll just go ahead and poke it all the way through. I'm just, so got that. Going to come back up in the same spot and just move the needle a little bit further. And you, you know, I'm showing, I'm doing kind of a hidden stitch, but you can, you can do a stitch that shows. Don't worry about it. I mean, if you want to do whip stitches along the edge and let it be an alternative color, that's another way to show off some color on your on your uh, little piece, that, that works too. I might do that on the other one, just for something different. Let's see, so that's that. This is still needing to be sewn down. I'm also wanting to sew a couple of little pieces of this kind of stuff on. So while I have this color in it, I think I'll just use it to tack this piece down. And this is on a piece of netting. I don't know if you can see it, but um, so you can put your needles through the netting to attach that. I'm trying to catch the netting rather than the ribbon so it doesn't flatten the ribbon out any more than I have to. I've got this little bitty piece of white and I'm gonna use this, I'll use this white to attach that just because it's so delicate. I don't want to then introduce another color that'll compete with it. So I'm just going to put it across it like that. Just kind of tack it a little bit. If it's loose on the edges, that's fine. Just want to tack it on. Okay. I would suggest you not put more than 
three colors together, three or four, and that will give it a unity because it's already got some craziness. Actually, I don't want to use, I've got one already wound up. It's already got some craziness with just the way everything's, you know, the stitches are going crazy and everything's going crazy. So one way to kind of pull it together is by limiting your pat color palette. So there's actually, and I think I covered it up, but there's some gold there. So I'm going to go ahead and use this gold. And so I'm going to do a feather stitch. I think I'll just go right up the middle. Let me, let me show you on a, on a card. If you think about four imaginary lines, <laughs> you're going to bring your needle up from the back here. And the thread will be out here and you'll, you'll go over here, and put your needle in here. And then you'll poke it up from the back here. And it's going to come over here. And also, let me show you. So your needle comes out here. You make a loop, put it back over here on the same, same level as that one. And then before you pull it all the way through, you move down just a little bit. So you're going to actually kind of make a triangle like that. And that's going to stop the thread. Like that. And then the next thing is you come over straight across from that and go down. And then you poke it back out like a triangle. Right there. And it does that. Then you move over straight across from that. Put your needle in. Pull it out a little bit and then you do the triangle again. So you move down between those two points a little bit and go like that. Come straight across, poke it in, make the little triangle. Make your little triangle. I think I'll, I think I will stop there. I don't really want to confuse things by going over that cross stitch and all that other stuff. So I'm just going to end it there. And there's the feather stitch, a thing called a stem stitch, which I could do that just to kind of demonstrate it. All it is is just you, you sew it a little bit over. So you make a stitch and then you just come right up next to that stitch. And kind of go sideways, just slightly. And so it's kind of like if you're embroidering, like at least that was the one we did with Girl Scouts, like they have a shape and you'd outline it, you'd use this. Instead of just running end to end stitches, you just overlap the ends just slightly. So I'm going to end that there. I think I'm going to go back to some of the straight stitches because that's a, 
a thing that I think looks so cool on these slow stitching is where you just do the plain old running stitch. Well, you need more than three or more than two, I mean, you need at least three, I would say. And then you do like several rows of them and I just like the way that looks. Good way to use up your thread that you have left. All right, so there's my little sampler on that one. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I would love it if you subscribed, click the like button, so on and so forth and what have you. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.